we started our unforgettable excursion into Cork's distinctive past by visiting the unforgettable Blarney Castle that towers high over Blarney Village. Showcasing its 18-foot thick stone walls, this majestic ruin once served as a fortress for sorts for the McCarthy Brood. About the North Wall Blarney Castle sits directly on an 8-meter cliff of rock which formed the quarry for building the castle. This is the most imposing view you will get of the castle and it looks even more dramatic because the walls slope gradually inward. Some of the most distinctive features on the north wall are two light windows, three garderobe outlets, and a casemented oriel window. In view, three ground level openings. Surrounding the castle are extensive gardens. These are paths touring the grounds with signs pointing out to various attractions. Tradition tells us that this was the watchkeepers or lookout tower. The sign reads, enter with care. You are standing at what was the gatehouse of a substantial bastion tower that once defended the tower house that we know as Blarney Castle. The castle is now a partial ruin with some accessible rooms and battlements. This drawing shows 12 spaces in the castle identified as one, Blarney Stone, 2 Chapel, 3 Kitchen, 4 Banqueting Hall, 5 Priest's Room, 6 Family Room, 7 Young Ladies Room, 8 Great Hall, 9 Earl's Room, 10 Basement, 11 Murder Hall, 12 Spiral Stairs. <music> Following our pictures I captured as we climbed the spiral stairs that led us to the top of the castle. At the top of the castle lies the Stone of Eloquence, better known as the Blarney Stone. Tourists visiting Blarney Castle may hang upside down over a sheer drop to kiss the stone, which is said to give the gift of eloquence. There are many legends as to the origin of the stone, but some say that it was a magical stone upon which Irish kings were crowned. The stone is set in the wall below the battlements, and to kiss it, one has to lean backwards, grasping an iron railing from the parapet walk. Discovery's Travel Channel lists kissing the Blarney Stone amongst its 99 things to do before you die. There is a world of difference between Blarney and Baloney. Baloney is flattery laid on with a trowel. Blarney is flattery laid on with the lips. That is why you have to kiss a stone to get it. Ove and Rosita kissed the stone, which is said to give the gift of eloquence. The Blarney stone was involved in the earliest days of cinema. It features in the 1904 movie and again the 1949 film Top of the Morning, starring Bing Crosby. In 1984, it is stolen once more in the internationally popular children's series Inspector Gadget. 
The Blarney Stone is the very quintessence of Irishness. Views of the breathtaking scenery surrounding the castle. Blarney Castle Estate offers visitors the chance to stroll in one of the country's most spectacular gardens. Then we headed over to yet another major Irish landmark, Blarney Woolen Mill Shop. This setting was a former full operating mill, but it has since been converted into Ireland's largest gift shop that sells traditional Irish wares to include Donegal hand-woven tweed, Irish linens, Waterford crystal, bone china and assorted Irish knitwear. Right outside the Blarney Castle estate, I visited the Church of the Immaculate Conception. This beautiful church is located across the road from the Blarney Mills. The tour bus drove alongside the port of Cork and the beautiful River Lee, which flows in two main channels around Cork. The Brian Boyle Bridge is a Scherzer rolling lift bascule bridge erected in 1911 and reconstructed in 1987. About St. Patrick's Bridge, the first bridge built in this spot was unfortunately swept away in a flood in 1789, actually before it was even finished. The bridge was then rebuilt and opened several months later. It was also destroyed by another terrible flood in 1853. A brand new stone bridge now in use opened in 1861 and it was reconstructed and improved in 1981. This bridge was named after Christy Ring, who was probably the greatest hurler Ireland has ever seen. He played at a high level until the age of 47. After retiring, he became a coach, but died at a relatively young age in 1979. Murphy's Brewery was founded in Cork in 1856. In 1983, Heineken International acquired all the assets of Murphy Brewery, resulting in a new lease of life for the brewery and protecting its valued traditions for the future. Today, it is the site of the main offices of Heineken in Ireland. 
The tour bus also passed through quaint villages, and in spite of the rain, I was able to capture some pictures for the travelogue. be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and until we meet again may the good Lord hold you in the palm of his hand but not squeeze too tightly. Yeah. <laughs>